practice course on craft. This program is divided into three sessions. In each session, we will have a chance to listen to speakers' presentations and also discussion where a free exchange of ideas will take place. The themes of the session one, two, and three is conviviality caring, craft value sharing, and craft cities regeneration, respectively. We have a total of eight speakers from home and abroad. All the presentations and discussions are pre-recorded and will be made public in order starting from the 28th to 30th of September. The edited videos will be made available on the online exhibition sites on the, of the Cheongju Craft Biennale and also the YouTube channel. In this third session, we discuss the topic of craft cities regeneration. We would like to take a look at the global cases where craft served as a driving force behind the city regeneration. And we have a presentation ready from Finland under the title of Fiskars Art, Design and Craft Village. The Fiskars is a small village by lake whose name means fisher in Finnish. Starting from the mid-1990s, artists, designers, and craftspeople started to gather together in the village and formed a cooperative, ran exhibitions, and sold their works, thereby bringing the new vitality to the village. But before we begin the presentation, let me explain how we will proceed. We will first listen to the presentation of our speaker who are joining us over Zoom, which will be followed by a discussion session with a discussant who is present on site. This discussion session will help us approach today's topic in question from diverse perspectives. So without further ado, let me invite this session's speaker and the discussant. As our speaker, we have Ms. Karin Witness, Director of the Ceramic Museum Kuom from Finland. Ms. Karin Witness is a Finnish ceramist. She is working as a member of Onoma, the cooperative of designers and artists in Fiskars Village, and also a member of the ceramic group Kusi. She exhibits all across the world as a prolific craft, craft person and has shown diverse exhibition curations. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and as our discussant, we have Ms. Im Mi Sun, an artistic director for the Cheongju Craft Biennale 2021. Director Lim has served as a director of Clay Arc Kim Hae Museum, chief curator for Korean International Ceramic Biennale, exhibition director for Contemporary Korean Craft Exhibition in celebration of the 100th anniversary of Korea France relations, and also as the head of the craft division at Korea Craft and Design Foundation. She's now in charge of the main exhibitions and academic events of the Cheongju Craft Biennale 2021 as an artistic director. Good to see you. Hi, thank you for having me. Then, let us invite Director Karin Witness for her presentation titled Fiskars Art, Design and Craft Village. Hello, everybody. Dear Korean friends, it's a pleasure to tell you shortly the history of the Fiskars village and what it is today. I hope my spe speech will also reach my Korean friends. I want to send all of you my warmest greetings. Korea, the Korean people, culture, art, design, craft, as well as the tradition of food is close to my heart. I miss you all. Uh, so now I will uh, tell you about the Fiskars Art Design and Craft Village and also about our cooperative Onoma. Uh, Fiskars is situated in the southern part of Finland, two and a half miles from the, the seaside. Uh, towards east, we have our capital city Helsinki. It takes only a little over an hour by car to reach the city from the Fiskars village. Uh, since the beginning of 1600, the village has been called Fiskars, which means fisher. It is said that a fisherman lived by the beautiful Lake Degashir here in the village area. The lake is very clean, has 
a lot of fish and crayfish. The forests are full of blueberries, lingonberries, mushrooms during the summer. Fiskas has been and is a good place to live. Winter allows skiing and even skating on the frozen Degasje ice. Forests are perfect for skiing as well in winter. To ice fish has been and is very popular during winter. Finland was under Swedish rule in early 1600. Sweden was one of the biggest producers of iron in Europe. The land was covered with forests and lakes here in Finland. The seaside used to reach till the village during old days. That is why iron was, ore was shipped to Finland from Sweden due to the great amount of wood needed in order to develop the iron bars, which were then shipped to Sweden. Also in Fiskars, the iron was used to make nails, thread, knives, hoes, and iron wheels. Here you can see an old picture of workers at the forgery. The old cutlery manufactured in village, uh, even uh, during the uh, 1900 uh, cutlery was also uh, manufactured here in, in this village. Here you can see an old forgery uh, and its workers. So, uh, the area had quite many workers those, it, during those days already. Even the first steam engine in Finland was manufactured in fin Fiskars. Iron works. In 1783, the iron works continued, but production was focused on processing copper ore from the nearby Oriarvi mine. The blast furnace was closed in 1802. Ever since, no basic iron manufacturing has been in the Fiskos village. But in 1822, the von Julien family era begins in Fiskars. The family bought the Fiskars ironworks and the village the production was focused on processing iron in 1832. The first cutlery mill in Finland was founded in our village. The production consisted of knives, including forks and scissors. In 1837, the first machine workshop in Finland was founded in the Fiskars village. Due to the first steam engine in Finland that was manufactured Fiskars in 1830s, the Fiskars tradition of implementing reform and innovation has got its roots in this period. Many social reforms also took place during Julie's ownership. Uh, Fiskars school, the red tile building and workers' apartments were built by von Julien during old days, the ironworks village got its own school and even a hospital. So everybody was very well taken care of. These buildings still, of course, exist. The main clock used in the village during old days, the bell rang and is still ringing every hour. Uh, the village had its own money as well. Uh, the even here you can see a picture of uh, the knife factory, but today it's used for um, craftsmen workshops. The barn. Farming in the village was greatly improved. The Fiskars village had a great influence on agriculture in our country. And of course, having so many workers, uh, 
they had all be, to be taken care of. The magazine for storing crops, amongst others, the Fiskars Plow Workshop, manufactured millions of plows and receiving gold medals for its plow designs. Fiskars became known for its farm and household implements, and the Fiskars name became synonym, synonymous with high quality. Today, we have a Fiskars museum in the village, telling and showing what everyday life during those days was. It was in a way an independent village taking well care of the workers and the inhabitants. The copper smithy where, and still used today, but not as a copper smithy. It is both a restaurant and a showroom for our exhibitions. Copper candle holders and even money. So the village for New Lien saw to it that the workers were paid with the money made in Fiskars. Uh, and of course, they then buying <laughs> things they needed for everyday life. Uh, the, they bought it from the company. The Fiskars village office is still used as an office. The main Fiskars uh, company office is, of course, in, in Helsinki. The small part next to the wooden building was the safe from which salary was paid to the workers every Saturday. So this part here. So it is said that this was the old, this is the oldest part in, in Fiskars. People's house, there were uh, parties uh, and uh, different kind of happenings uh, to amuse the uh, workers in the village, and this uh, people's house is still used for uh, different happenings. Uh, here was the engineering works. Uh, old village, uh, old uh, red brick uh, works, engineering works that is now used as a cabinet maker's, uh, cabinet maker's um, workshop. Here is an old mill, very beautiful with the slag uh, tiles as well, and red bricks, and the big mansion owned today by the Fiskars company, but the, uh, the owners uh, von Julin, they lived in this big mansion during the 18th and begin 19. This is the oldest inn in Finland, which has been working since 1836. It is uh, both a hotel, and also a restaurant. In 1883, uh, Fiskars became a li limited company. In 1915, Fiskars was listed as Helsinki Stock Exchange. In 1918, Finland gets its independence. The Fiskars product range was expanded. Fiskars grows and develops. The so-called 1930s stock market crash, however, slowed down expansion at Fiskars. Not until the Second World War, the Fiskars management made plans for reforming the company structure to accommodate mass production. The Fiskars scissors. Uh, the old orange handle scissors are one of Fiskar's best known products. It is so well known that even in the States, teachers ask their students to bring their Fiskars instead of scissors. The orange color of the scissors was a coincidence. Whilst making the prototype, the machine happened to have orange colored 
plastic. The color of the scissors handle was voted by the employees that the orange color would be the best. Changes is in the Fiskars village. The scissors and cutlery was mainly produced in the Fiskars village until the late 1970s. After that, most of the production was moved abroad or to other parts of Finland. That meant that the Fiskars village, who had employees living and working in the Fiskars village, had to move because of lack of work. The village, the village was depopulated. Working and living spaces were almost empty early 1980s. The village was to say was so to say dying. The, uh, how the Fiskars village developing a new area is when Ingmar Limberg was vice president at the Fiskars company. Ingmar was to find out a way how to save the village. And he tells that one night he woke up and he got the splendid idea to persuade artists, designers, and craftsmen to live and work in the village. So the immense factory spaces stood empty. Workers' apartments and houses that were built already during old days stood empty. Houses, shops, and warehouses stood empty. The beautiful magazine had no use anymore for storing crops or as did not the apple storage as well. In the beginning, highly qualified artists, designers, and craftsmen were lured to move to the village. Houses were cheap, working spaces had low rents, land could not be bought but rented. Artists, designers, and artisans started to move into the village. Kari Virtanen, cabinet maker, was one of the first craftsmen to move to, to the Fiskars village. Today, Nikari workshop is in, its, in this old machinery, which is now a cabin, the cabinet maker's uh, working space. The old forgery has been covered with bricks and is today Hotel Tegel. Here you can see some of us first artists, designers, and craftsmen who moved into the Fiskars village in early 1990s. So here you can see, amongst others, Soko Park. Yes. And Kari Virtanen, ceramic artist, Anneli Sainio, and so on and so on. So, what happened? Yes, the artist, first of us who moved to Fiskars, uh, decided to start to have a summer exhibition. In 1994, the first joint exhibition was held in the Fiskos village by a number of 27 artists, designers and artisans who had moved to the village. The exhibition was named the first exhibition. Its idea was to combine design and visual arts and to consider them alongside each other. Already this exhibition received highly positive terms by the public and the press. Following summers, new exhibitions were shown in the village, each one named as numbers, second exhibition, third, fourth, and so on, all of them being a very high class. Here, a picture of uh, the second exhibition. And the play, the uh, copper, old copper smithy was, uh, was used for these exhibitions and are still used for our uh, summer exhibitions. The third exhibition theme is storing 
in the magazine. So we all helped to clean the magazine and using the space for a wonderful summer exhibition. And the theme was really to magazine. That meant everything was designed uh, and by artists. So here you can see yeah, my kimchi pots over there, some for uh, sake bottles, this for uh, wine colders and so on. But you can see that the environment was very lovely. The, the old magazine, how beautifully built and so on. Well, because we started to have exhibitions every summer, we decided to uh, do this cooperative Onoma. And found, it was founded in, the cooperative Onoma is founded in 1996. But the number of designers, artists and artisans grew fast as did the exhibition work. It became necessary to find a permanent form for the movement. In 1996, the Cooperative Artisans in Fiskars was founded as an umbrella organization for the purpose of organic exhibitions, events, and training, and so to sell products made and designed by its members. In addition to the participating in the joint organization, the members engage independently in their own occupations. The, the cooperative had 47 founding members. To be accepted as a member of the cooperative, you have to live or work in the village and be a professional in craft, design, or visual arts. The Onoma shop and the aim of the cooperative. The vice president of the Fiskars company, Ingmar Lindberg, defined one of the fundamentals of the cooperative in 1996. The aim has from the beginning been to promote the members' business in the field of craft, design and arts. The main activity is to organize exhibitions and to sell and market products made and designed by its members. The cooperative offers a common marketing and retail channel. Exhibitions, and this again in the old coppersmithy. The fourth exhibition uh, beginning in 1994, summer exhibitions have been arranged annually at the Copper Smithy with the schedule later expanded to events throughout the year. The organizers of the summer exhibitions have maintained a high standard, which may be one of the main reasons why they have been noted as events of national importance. The content and the focus in the exhibition vary every year. The first international exhibition in 1996 in Fiskars, uh, the theme is ceramics. Ceramic artists from Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Germany, UK, USA, amongst others, were invited to exhibit. And again, the magazine was used for that. And the architecture of the uh, Exhibition was by local designer uh, Badro Kulvik and Antti Siltavori. The sixth exhibition uh, in 1999 by Onoma members. Uh, so uh, the first exhibitions that were shown uh, always every summer had also uh, an exhibition uh, with the members of the Onoma Cooperative. Even outdoor art, this is a five meter high 
sculpture made out of branches. And this was an artist uh, from Helsinki who was invited. Here again, our seventh exhibition. So we did change. Sometimes we had our exhibition in the magazine and some summers we had it in the coppersmithy. Uh, this is a team called Hotel. So small hotel, hotel rooms were uh, designed. And the exhibition openings have always been very, very nice and great. Uh, big speeches, a uh, lot of uh, people coming, friends, and, and always Ingmar Lindberg, of course, giving his speech. And, uh, and uh, people having a nice time Really, it's always great. Exhibition abroad. Of course, because uh, press wrote a lot of us about us and good things about us. Uh, uh, museums uh, and other organizations uh, became very curious about us. And so we were invited, for example, in 1996 to Hagenes Museum in Sweden. Ex exhibitions have been sent to Sweden, many Euro European countries, Japan, Me Mexico. And in 2016, the Onoma exhibition, New and Classics, was presented at the Gallery White Block in Seoul. There has been interest not only in skilled creative designers, artists and artisans, but also in the Fiskars phenomenon as a whole. Some of us have several times exhibited ceramic art and design both in Seoul and in the beautiful gallery Po in Pusan. The aims of the exhibitions are to show the members diverse exper expertise, present high level and professional know-how in the field of design, craft and arts to cre create a wider network in Finland and abroad, aiming to develop and to further raise the level uh, of exhibitions and other activities to present current subjects and new points of view. So in 1999, we received the State Artist Award, one of the biggest awards we could get uh, in, we can get in Finland. So of course, we all took ourselves to, in a bus to Helsinki and to, to uh, join each other uh, toasting with a glass of champagne. It was a lovely day, a lovely night. So uh, the, I will now show you some works of, of the artists, uh, designers and craft in here in, in, in Fiskars. But I shall tell you about the shop that the Onoma shop, the artists and the designers had its own uh, sales outlet at first exhibition in 1994. As the activities came underway, the outlet evolved to become Onoma shop. On Onoma means is own in Finnish. The shop is the designers and artists own shop. Onoma is today used as a name for the whole cooperative. Today, Onama maintains a shop in the clock tower building in the heart of the building. For sale, there is a wide collection of its members, serial objects and pieces of art. Artists in residence. Since 2006, there has been the artist in residence in Fiskars. The aim of the residence is to promote 
the exchange of information within the field of design, craft, and art on an international level. It offers both the visiting artists as well as the members an opportunity to network, to participate in creative cooperation projects and in advanced research work. Fisker's Village Artists in Residence is open to professionals from all creative businesses, nationalities, and ages. This includes working craftspeople, designers, visual artists, architects, industrial designers, performing artists, composers, musician, musicians, curators, producers, journalists, writers, and researchers. So collectivity, in the beginning, the whole activity has based on cooperation and all members participated actively in the work. The exhibitions were organized with voluntary work. The shop was kept open during weekends by members. The meetings and occasions were attended by all members. This phenomenon could, would not have been possible without commitment team spirit, and a lot of voluntary work. The same attitude is demand, demanded even today, even though the organization has developed significantly. The ben member benefit is to be in active in common issues. The members have several opportunities to affect the Onam affairs by bringing suggestions, brainstorming, improvements, presenting wishes, giving feedback, and so on. At this moment, the member has no actual obligations, but active members are conditions of existence for the cooperative. The Onoma Cooperative Board consists of five elected members, five elected members in the Art Committee. And Onoma today, the cooperative was founded in 1996 and ha had some 40 founding members. The number today has grown up to 137 members, rep representing over 20 different professions as artisans, architects, interior architects, industrial designers, visual artists, cabinet makers, ceramists, goldsmiths, glass blowers, graphic designers, textile artists, boat builders. The growth of the cooperative demands changes in the organization as well. The active members have not increased in por por proportion and people get tired of voluntary work and of the fact that always same members are active. Over the years, the exhibition period was lengthened. The exhibitions that were arranged in summer was increased to two, and off-season exhibitions were arranged. This demanded a lot of effort as well as money. Onoma was depending on the Fiskars company sponsorship, even though the exhibitions were also funded by the Finnish state as well as private funds. 2013, the critical economical situation for the board to put a lot of thought on the future of the Onoma Cooperative and on the organization. The board decided to separate the shop, exhibition, and artist residency to independent activities. As a result, Onoma hired a person to be in charge of the exhibitions and another person to develop the shop. International activities and a desire to exhibit outside Fiskos Village is today considered important. The challenge concerning that the shop has been unprofitable. The first task for the new shopkeeper was to examine what kind of activities create a more sustainable future for the Onoma shop. In the near future, a remarkable challenge will be emphasized on the locally made message to the visitors of the village and other clients. 
the, the collectivity of the members, strengthening the voluntary work spirit and collaboration with both Fisker's company is considered an as important task tasks in the variable ironworks and the developing Finland. I call this a win-win situation. In spite of the Onoma organization, some of us have created our independent business, networks and shops, although being member of the Onoma organization. These are, for example, Bianco Blue, glass designer and glass blower, Camilla Mobile, Sirius Gallery, Glass Design Gallery, Desico Handmade Candles, Yalo, Goldsmith, Kuhn, Studio Ceramics Museum and Gallery, Leanika, Leatherwork, Nikari, Cabinet Maker, Rukin Aura, Artisan Shop with six members, Sari Korpi Design, Goldsmith Design, Sassi, Silversmith Design Shop, Takopaya, the Blacksmith, all members have their own independent workshops as well. So I will now show you uh, works made by members. So I want to present some of our Anama members who both are highly skilled in their profession, but also have meant a lot to our community. Here I have pictures, this, these are stools by Kari Virtanen. Kari is considered one of our top cabinet makers in Finland. He was one of the first craftsmen who moved from Western Finland to Fiskars in 1993. Kari is the founder of Nikari, the company. Alvar Aalto, the architect and Kai Frank, the designer, used to do projects with Kari for many years whilst he was living and working in Ostrobotnia. In 1993, he received, received the CEO, Furniture Designer of the Year. Uh, the fruit bowl, both designed and made by Kari, is chosen into the permanent collection of Museum of Modern Art, New York. In 2009, he received the Pro Finlandia Medal. 2020, Nikari Limited and Woodnotes <clears throat> joined forces continuing as separate brands, yet merging some parts of the operations. Johanna Boria begins to work as CEO for both companies. So, designed by Kari. Here, uh, uh, production by uh, the Nikari firm, company, and uh, some of the cabinet makers uh, want to have their pictures taken in my home. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Here is one also, uh, Andrei Hartikainen. Andre is a young cabinet maker who was chosen Young Designer of the Year in 2018. Andre is a creator of high quality and aesthetically refined furniture pieces, collectible design and sculptural objects. Andre's sculptural objects. And of course, we also have um, textile artists, uh, where Soily is a textile artist using material she finds in the nature in her artwork. She combines, for example, bast with copper thread. And this is from the first exhibition. Camilla Mulberry. Camilla is a glass designer. She wants to create objects and artworks in which the nature of glass has a material is emphasized in a new and exciting way. The colors embodied in glass glow in a spectacular way and light brings out new dimensions and possibilities. To Camilla, quality means sustainability. 
timeless design. Her latest glass design designs are combined with natural stone from our archipelago. Uh, Camilla had an exhibition in my museum Pfum uh, last winter. Jukka Mäkelä, born 1948 and unfortunately passed away 2018. Jukka Mäkelä was one of our most talented painters. His art pieces were abstract, using acrylic and applying these thin paper cuts on painted canvas in a collage art like. He was the first Finnish artist who was invited to exhibit at the finest art museum, Kiasma in Helsinki. Jukka Mäkelä's work. And even here. Deepa Panchamia. Deepa moved from London to Fiskars in 2008. Deepa is a textile artist designing and developing textile sculptures, installations, and wearable art. She is combining both natural and synthetic materials through a repetitive and intricate process of folding, pleating, cutting layers, and stitching. Her aim is to discover new ways to manipulate fabric to create engaging textural formations. Rutsuko Sakata. Rutsuko Sakata is a Japanese, Japanese textile artist living here in Fiskars, of course, too, using felt and thin silk in her art pieces which partly are clothing like shawls, vests, or jackets. Her installations are very effective using strong colors. Uh, Rutsuko travels around the world teaching felting. Kim Simonson. Kim, having graduated from the University of Art and Design in 2000, he held his first solo exhibition already in 2003. His works have been and are shown in different parts of the world in museums and art galleries and at art fairs. At the moment, he's having an exhibition in Tokyo, for example. His works have be also been purchased by many museums in various countries, and this summer, uh, Kim has been showing in my museum, Kun, uh, his exhibition. So here are some works from the exhibition. Simonson began his career with figurative works in ceramics, and in recent years he has used colored nap attached to ceramics for effect. The idiom and form of his works combine Japanese manga with the traditions of traditional visual art. His works have also been inter interpreted as deriving from traditional ornamental figurines of Euro European porcelain. Despite, despite of his use of fired ceramics, his works are now considered as representing the visual art rather than ceramic art. Kim has chosen, was chosen 2006, the young artist of the year. Howard Smith, born in USA in 1928, unfortunately passed away this year. Howard Smith moved to Finland from the United States in the 60s. Howard was called he called himself Paper Smith. He was both an artist and a designer. His artwork mostly consisted of collage using whatever material. He made faces out of hats. He designed ceramic unique teapots and cer ceramic art pieces. 
For the Arabia factory in Helsinki, he designed a series of wild animals called Run Free in the 80s. When moving to Fiskars in 1996, Howard started to make sculptures out of rusty steel and iron. The material whatsoever would stop would not stop him from making art. So this is a sculpture made out of trash. Rita Talonpoika. Rita is one of our ceramic artists living and working in, the, in our village. She is known for being a splendid thrower, designing big oval bowls, colorfully decorated throne mugs, jars, and teapots. Her unique art pieces are often stone-like sculptures with rough surfaces. Rita is an expert in firing the only wood-fired kiln we have in Fiskars. Most of us have electric kilns, a few have gas kilns. So here are Rita's thrown bowls with uh, dotted uh, slip decoration. As Rita had been in Australia, she was inspired by the traditional decorating methods in Australia by the Albury. Vivi Vareswa, the graphic artist, Vivi Vareswa stays partly in Fiskars and partly in Helsinki, where she has working spaces. Her graphics show often wild animals in the nature. She's an excellent drawer. So here you have two lions. And Upiantila, our only blacksmith in the village, is Upiantila. He's a master in his field. The Fiskas company built him a forgery. It is situated in the center of the village and is very frequently visited by tourists. Upi is arranging courses in blacksmithing and making the Finnish puko knife for visitors in Fiskars. Kirsti Dokas and Christian Sarikoppi, a couple. Kirsti Dokas, designer, master of arts in one of the best known jewelry designer in Finland. Kirsti received Goldsmith of the Year Award in 1999. She has designed many of Finland's most popular jewelry series, including the Twin Flower, Fountain and Dream. She has been head of design at the Kalevala, one of our best jewelry companies in Finland. Today, she is working together with her husband, Master Goldsmith, Christian Saarikorpi, here in Fiskas. Christian Saarikorpi is known as an extremely skilled goldsmith with a command of both traditional goldsmithing skills and computer-assisted methods. He was awarded the Goldsmith of the Year in 2005. Sari Korpi has also made jewelry in other materials like plywood of thin layers. Together with his wife, Kirsti Dukas, he has developed a jewelry collection, boldly combining authentic precious stones with 3D printed polyamide plastic, shown here in this picture. Jussi Nordberg is the only wooden boat builder in Fiskars. He's both designing and repairing wooden fisherman boats, as well as rowboats and even sailing boats. And Suku Park, Sukvo Park, also known as Suku Park here in Finland. Suku introduced the contemporary ceramic art to our country. Suku was, an, uh, was a director for Pentic Nova, and lived with his family in northern Finland between 1984 and 87. Today he is living there as well. After having moved to Espo and later to Fiskars 1997, he became member of the Anoma organization here in Fiskars. I suppose most of you know or even have met Suku as he was professor at the Sangmuyong University in Seoul. I have been so lucky to learn to know Suku already before he moved to Fiskars with his family. 
Together, we founded the ceramic group Kulsi. We traveled several times to Korea, exhibiting in different galleries in Seoul and later to many other countries. I had the great luck to be introduced to your beautiful country by Suku. Here we have some more Suku Park. Uh, Suku is today living up north in Posio. He likes the climate there. The Fiskars village today. So here you can see, uh, this is the center actually. And from here till my museum up here, it's only two kilometers. And uh, this is where the most shops are. Here is the, um, the coppersmithy. Here we have a hotel, uh, Bad Suse, the oldest one. Here is the mansion. Over here, parking places. All these houses here are occupied by uh, designers, artists, and so on here. And up here is my studio and Kuom. So, uh, Pum, the studio, studio ceramics. Oh. You have connection? Yes. Did, do you have me connected? Yes. Good, good. Okay, because they told me something. Yeah, fine. I'll continue. Kuhn uh, Studio Ceramics Museum and Gallery. So I, in 1994, I was very lucky having found a, and bought a piece of land here in Fiskars. I wanted to build my ceramic studio and home using ceramics in the architecture. Architect Thomas Ethanem was very willing to draw the house as my wish was to have it built out of wood. Wood was not a very common building material during those days. Today it is. My second wish was to make all possible in ceramics that could be part of the architecture. So I started designing and molding bricks outdoor tiles, pressing floor tiles, casting wall reliefs, making tiles for the fireplace, even wash basins. Before my studio part of the building was ready, I was able to rent a working and living space in Fiskars. As the building was ready at last, I got the idea to invite ceramic artists both from Finland and abroad to exhibit in my home. Till now, I have exhibited 16 summers, especially the exhibitions with Korean artists. Art pieces were a great success. They were, amongst others, Park Yong-suk and the Sinavi group. I started to collect ceramic art pieces from the exhibitions. One day, I realized I had quite a big collection. That is when I got the idea to build the museum, Kwum. Uh, Kum comes from the, uh, the name Kum consists of my initials and you see um, U-M. I have learned that if you pronounce it softly, it means dream in Korean. And Kum is really a dream I have been happy to carry, carry out. So, of course, I also made ceramics for the museum. So this is the entry. And if you look at the, uh, my tiles, uh, they, you can see K, you can see W, and you can see M. So it's my logo, actually. And this is, uh, I show partly also what I've been uh, collecting. And here is from the first summer. I opened the museum 2019. And so I have pieces from both Finland, but I also have pieces from 
from uh, Korea and uh, Australia and so on and so on. This is the staircase at Kung, goes up to the second floor. Uh, the staircase is designed by Kari Virtanen and another cabinet maker then made them, Heikki Paso. And along the staircase, I've made the tiles. Uh, and when you go up, you can, you can see name tiles because this project is totally uh, financed by myself. Uh, I gave a possibility for the uh, for my friends uh, for uh, to, for example, order a name tile, and all the name tiles are up on the along the the wall, going upstairs. This is from the first exhibition, summer exhibition upstairs. So here you can see uh, Finnish artists like Kati Tuominen and Niittylä, and as well um, Kim Simonsson, Riitta Talanpoika, and so on. So Kum has both summer and winter exhibitions, and I invite uh, professionals from both Finland and from abroad. Three ceramic artists from Korea exhibiting in 2019 winter. Yo Kyung Ok, Miki Kim, and Song Miha. And Miki Kim will have a exhibition this winter of her, it's her 10th anniversary. Min Kyung Kim will exhibit his uh, this winter at Kum, the exhibition from the Taiwan Wind of Change has at last arrived in Finland and will be shown as well coming winter. Unfortunately, the Wind of Change exhibition, uh, the piece, art pieces were stuck at the Suez Canal uh, five months in this ever given, I call it never forgiven, uh, container ship and but today it is in Helsinki so I will show it this winter too. In 2019 I had the great honor to have the first lady of Korea Kim Young Suk visiting Kung and my home. I hope my presentation has give, given you an idea of what the Fiskars village is today. I also wish to see you all in Fiskars one day. Hopefully it will be possible in the future for me to arrange a big Korean contemporary ceramic ex exhibition at Kwon here in Fiskars village. Thank you. Thank you, Director Wutnos. It was a lovely presentation. Thank you. It is indeed a very beautiful village there. I haven't been there, but I have heard a lot about it. And I feel like I have actually been there listening to your presentation because you have shared so many elements of the Fiskars village, be it lake, forest, and the stories of the artists. Thank you for interesting presentation and inviting artists over, craftsmen over, and designers over to create one community sounds like a great idea. And this is a history of the Fiskars village and artists cooperating together and create a new story and community touches me. And in terms of the Fiskars village coming together, there was of course cooperative and I believe that there had been shared philosophical values among the artists there. So I came to dig deep, think about what had been the motive or the philosophy bond among the artists. That was my like thoughts listening to your presentation. And I would like to invite our discussant artist director Im Mi Sun for her comment. Okay, thank you. Then I'll just move 
give you my first question. You mentioned that in the 1980s, the fist cars industry kind of reshaped and the production lines went overseas or were relocated to other parts of Finland. And the village was depopulated, leaving a lot of working and living spaces empty. Back then, why did Vice President Ingmar Lindbergh decided to invite artists, designers, and craftsmen of all people to move in and for the revitalization of the village? Why did they? Why did he choose these artists? Any particular reasons for that? Well, first of all, there was no such a place in Finland where artists, designers, and craftsmen had uh, gathered, and. Uh, because this village was, so to say, dying, uh, all the uh, working spaces were stood empty, houses were empty, something had to be done with the village. And uh, so uh, Ingmar Lindberg has also always been a visionary. He uh, could see that the possibility were great here to invite the artists, designers and craftsmen to both live here and to work here. So the possibility he saw was in the making activities. It is so based on the materiality, he focused on the activities of crafting, I guess. And the fact that he didn't invite, like, for example, per se, visual artists or performing artists, I believe his cars kind of focused on creation or making. Yes, uh, it was focused on creating and making. It was the old tradition in this uh, in this village, uh, but uh, the activity uh, could not be foreseen that we would arrange exhibitions, but this was the idea that came from the craftsmen, artists and designers themselves. So they decided uh, to uh, arrange these exhibitions in uh, like, for example, in the Copper Smithy, which, was a, which is a wonderful uh, space uh, to do exhibitions as well as the uh, magazine. Thank you. Building on top of that, the if you look at the Onoma Cooperative, to be accepted as a member of the cooperative, it is mentioned that you have to be a professionals in craft, design, or visual arts. So I see that Fiskars has been developed to focus especially on craft designs and visual art specialists. But in contrast, about the residency program, I don't see any limitations as to nationalities or disciplines. So artists, architects, designers, performing artists, musicians, creator, critics, any other artists can be invited as for the residency program. So why no limitations for residency program? Yeah, the, it is, uh, first of all, there is this possibility because uh, we see that the contact with also other artists from other parts of the world. Uh, of course, we get a lot from what they are then showing because they also, also can take part in exhibitions here. Uh, but they, we hope also that they will learn a lot from, the, from us. So this is one reason, yeah. Okay, the summer exhibition of the Fiskars became so popular and that is one of the reasons why so many people visit Fiskars Village and in 2019, I believe that the Fiskars Village Art and Design Biennale had took place. Can you provide us with more explanation about this event? Uh, 2019, yes. Uh, the thing is that, of course, uh, other exhibitors uh, are very interested in this area. Uh, tourists all over Finland, but also tourists from abroad 
artists, designers, architects, and so on, have all been very interested in this uh, area, in this place, and what we are showing. And therefore, the Helsinki Design Week had its Biennale here as well, and we'll have it uh, next year. Uh, but uh, due to the pan epidemic, uh, everything has a little changed, and, and so, but it was a great event also to show uh, design, not only from Finland, but also uh, from abroad as well. Thank you. One of the remarkable thing about this is that national support, corporate sponsorship had not be, was not behind this Fiskars village. It is great to see that Fiskars artists gather together to create and run this village. So any tips like from the financial perspective and what had been the most difficult part when it comes to the operation of the Fiskars village? And if so, how did you manage to solve this? Uh, well, of course, uh, we all have <clears throat> done a lot of voluntary work. and uh, But we have had uh, the company as a supporter, in a way, uh, giving us spaces uh, to exhibit. Of course, all the working spaces and living spaces, uh, people who rent them are responsible for themselves. But then we also have uh, uh, applied for fundings. And, uh, and of course, the exhibitions uh, uh, bring also some uh, money, <laughs> of course, because we have to have workers who uh, uh, see to it that they uh, take, caring, uh, take care of the exhibitions. And um, that is all a financial thing. That is, of course, uh, it is very important for us that we get the fundings also from other uh, uh, supporters. Thank you. I hope that COVID-19 goes away as quickly as possible. And the INC Congress, I believe, will be run virtually. I hope things get better as soon as possible so that I can personally visit the Kum Museum. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you, for allowing us to see all these interesting questions and answers. To sum up what had been going on, arts, design, and crafts kind of turned an entire village and regenerated it, giving it new vitality. So it is indeed a very interesting case to look at. Art forming one community and changing lives, it, it, it looks like a new model for city planning. And within the community, artists trust each other and use their energy in creating stuff and regenerating stuff. And they even created this limited company. It, it is indeed a very interesting model. If we, humanity, have to paint a beautiful picture, I believe this Fiskars village can be one example human beings working together with a shared goal in mind. I think Fiskars Village would provide us with a great example. I wish we had more time and delve deep, dig deeper into the discussion, but due to time limits, I think we have to wrap up here. So thank you both. And I believe this conversation held under the topic of Fiskars Art, Design, and Craft Village helped our watchers more relatable to the Craft Village about what it is and what it stands and what it can do for a city regeneration. So thank you, Director Witness and Director Lim, for being with us. And with that, let us conclude the presentation and discussion on the topic of Fiskars Village held as part of the International Colloquium on Craft of Chongju Craft Biennale 2021. Thank you for watching.